Hi guys, welcome back to the Jedi Knight of the Woods channel. It's Paul here. Thanks very much for stopping by and taking the time to join me again for another video. What I wanted to do on this occasion was just introduce you to my um, survival kit that I've put together. Uh, this is the uh, my attempt at a sort of last gasp, last ditch effort to attempt at keeping myself alive. Uh, if I ever find myself in that situation, obviously I hope I don't. But um, you can find a lot of these kits out there on the market that have been put together by um, people that have got absolutely no outdoors experience whatsoever. And I certainly didn't want to go down that route. I wanted to put this kit together that was tried and tested with uh, equipment that I, I kind of was familiar with and knew how to use. So this is the latest incarnation. It does evolve and change over time, but it's sort of put together on a modular basis, the same as the rest of my kit. So uh, we'll just introduce you to it. First of all, the pouch. This is uh, about six inches by four inches and about two inches, two and a half inches uh, across. Um, it's got two different options for carry. There's two loops on the back just there to enable horizontal carry and then I've got a single loop just through there to enable vertical carry or it can just be chucked into the uh, the pack. So um, looking in, inside, it's not a Maxpedition or anything like that, no YKK zippers but they uh, seem to be holding up okay. Uh, first things first to take uh, out is a little uh, airtight and watertight capsule and, and this is basically acting as a tinder capsule for me at the moment. Um, so what I've got in here um, is just a small book of matches, there's a, a tampon, I need to put another one in there and a couple of alcohol prep pads that I found lying around that I thought would be quite handy, they take a spark very nicely as well. So uh, that's a little bit of fire lighting kit, I wouldn't say it's a fire lighting kit but it's a, a tinder capsule. Number one item, number two item out, uh, let's go for paracord, that's about 25 feet of uh, cobra stitched paracord, very tightly bound. Uh, then we've got, next item is a lock knife. Uh, this is one of the British Army issue clasp knives, um, stainless steel, very, very good, strong, sturdy knife. That, uh, good enough for the British forces, so it's good enough for me. Given to me by a very close member of my family. Uh, next thing out, the trusty bandana. I always keep one of these to hand. As I've mentioned to you probably before in another video, these things are absolutely invaluable. You know, if you find yourself in a fire or around uh, toxic chemicals, a terrorist attack, you know, all of those sorts of things. If you've got this available and you can soak it even better, that will prevent you from getting those uh, nasty respiratory problems that could end up killing you or making your life very, very nasty. Next thing, right at the back, I have one of the silver Mylar blankets. This is not a particularly thick one, but it will do to reflect the heat in an uh, you know, emergency situation. Use that for shelter building. Then I've got two tins in here. One is for first aid and one is the survival kit proper. And the reason I've done this is I didn't just want to include in a survival kit a couple of band-aids that you know would do for a small small nick here and there. I wanted to put something that was a little bit more substantial together. You know, you're out in the woods for a couple of days and uh, messing with uh, axes and saws and knives and that sort of business. And I think it's it's quite key to have a half decent survival uh, first aid kit. Separate these two. One's an Altoids tin. One's a, a hot, um, seriously strong mince tin. The first aid kit has got a band-aid on there and a single range band and the survival kit has got two range bands. So I won't go through this uh, in, in too much detail but it's got things in there like uh, a couple of different types of band-aids. There's, there's a, in the side of the lid there's some safety pins and a needle. Um, I've got some different selections of band-aids there for different jobs. There's a prep pad, some very very small band-aids with some small nicks, some uh, stomach upset tablets in the form of Rennie. There's some Imodium, last thing you want to be doing is getting diarrhoea. There's quite a large gauze pad there. There's some larger gauze pads at the bottom and two painkillers in the form of Cocodamol, which I find very good, Paracetamol and uh, Codeine. So that's the small first aid kit. I can always go into a bit more detail if anybody wants me to on that one. Uh, what I really wanted to show you really was the sort of survival kit part of this. Uh, we'll go into that now. So two range bands, fire lighting purposes. I think I've covered most bases on this one. Uh, it's absolutely jam packed into this tin. There's, there's really no room for anything else to go in there, to be honest with you. It's an Altoids version, uh, which is a great size. Um, what I've got, again, sellotaped inside the lid. I've got a couple of safety pins. There's two light sticks, very, very small ones. There's five eyed screws there, which can enable me to make uh, and use my fishing kit, a uh, sort of bendy piece of hazel or willow or something along those lines to make a fishing kit. And I've also got some um, paper clips there as well. So then the first thing out is the trusty tampon in a tube, um, fire lighting purposes. You know, going along the lines of um, it's absolutely critical to keep the body core temperature uh, where it should be. Um, so I'm sort of looking at fire, water and shelter in, in equal measures. Signalling is covered in there to a degree. And navigation purposes 
uh, food, etc. But uh, next thing out is a little candle. Um, that's just to keep a flame, you know, burning. If you uh, experience any problems doing so, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, six waterproof matches with a striker there. There's the actual fire flint, um, just a NATO version. Then we've got navigation purposes. We've got a small, very small button compass. I'd use this along with maybe my watch or other ways of uh, navigation. Then you've got small little light, very, very good light, these things. Uh, stays on, hands-free operation. Not going to lose that in the dark. Then we've got a small pencil um, for marking maps, putting on a map, um, leaving instructions or notes for any members of a party you might be with, making a map of your locale where the sort of local resources are, etc. Um, then I've got the Leatherman Multi-Tool, um, the Micro, Leatherman Micro, uh, single blade on there, very very sharp, and it's also got the scissors option as well as some hygiene options in nail file, etc. Great little multi tool. Uh, I managed to pick up just recently a fantastic little sharpening stone. Um, as we all know, out in the field, if you get into problems with uh, you know dull blades, etc., fantastic little. It's not the finest grit in the world, but it will do a job sharpening a blade. Cracking little addition. We've got the commando wire saw there. Um, great little addition to the kit, won't last forever, but it will certainly help you out a pinch with some smaller, thinner twigs. Then we've got a uh, more robust little saw, that's one of these folding uh, derma-safe saws that will get through the thicker stuff, shelter building. Um, right at the bottom I've got a smallish plastic Ziploc bag for carrying water. Then we have a small fishing kit with some hooks, swivels, um, sinkers, that sort of thing. Then towards the bottom we've got a very very small little metal whistle. Chose a metal one so it wouldn't get broken very easily. Then we have six waterproof rotator purification tablets. There's uh, six litres worth of purification there. A um, couple of days worth if you look at the basis of two litres of water per day. Um, then right at the bottom we have two sheets of paper used for fire lighting or leaving notes as I've said before making a map after a reconnaissance mission around your local area. Then right at the very bottom, I've got two pieces, very, very flat um, sandpaper. One fine, one coarse. You know, if you're getting into carving some utensils, you need a spoon to eat with, then you can do that and finish it off nicely. Um, also, along with the sharpening blade, you can sharpen any uh, dull tools with that. So guys, that's the survival kit. Uh, any suggestions, please feel free to put them forward. Uh, I think I've covered pretty much all the bases there of uh, water, water purification, shelter building, navigation and signaling of course with the, uh, the shiny tin lid and the flashlight and also the whistle. Um, redundancy purposes in terms of blades, I've got the larger knife and a smaller knife on the Leatherman. Um, some protection there from fire and smoke and etc. Shelter building material. Um, food I can always catch with the, uh, the fishing kit, assuming I've got the means uh, to go fishing. You can use that as a single snare if you know there's some squirrels around or something like that, rabbits, etc. Uh, or other game. Uh, one single snare is not going to probably feed you very uh, effectively, but you know it can be used for that. Uh, food you can go with, without with for a long, long time. So uh, most of the emphasis on this survival kit is probably short term rather than long term, as I'm sure you'll agree. But uh, you know, I, I'm, I know what I'm looking for in terms of wild edibles and fungi, etc. Like that, berries, tubers. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to keep myself alive on those for, for a little while. So there you have it guys, to so say uh, any suggestions, please put them forward, negative comments, not interested. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do as well. That would be uh, fantastic. And I look forward to seeing you on another video. Thanks very much guys.